Hi people, this is a review for the Red All Metal 1419 CNC from Banggood.com who have very kindly given me this one to play around with and give feedback on whether that be good or bad. Gots to love Banggood. Some might remember that I made an old 3D printer into a CNC and while it was a fun project it's not a good machine and it couldn't do much beyond a bit of wood and plastic and scaring the pants off me for the fear that it might kill me. I've since disassembled the machine for parts as I don't have much space in the workshop sadly. The next step up from that abomination of a machine was the cheap 3018 CNC's that you see so many people get. I've heard that they're great for the money but I wanted something just that little bit more robust and the 1419 certainly is that. It's mostly made of solid aluminium or aluminum if you're from one of those backward countries. No 3D printed or injection molded parts here it's all T8 lead screw instead of belts and has anti-backlash nuts. This is the sort of machine that will really hurt if you drop it on your foot, and the sort of machine that will still be in one piece if you do. It is unfortunately the type of machine that comes in many parts and needs some assembly first. Instructions are lacking, but luckily there are a few videos out there on how to put it together, including obviously what is the best one, mine! No, joking aside there, there are a few really good videos, especially if you're Italian. Uh, this chap that I pop up on screen here does a really good one. Um, mine, I think, is probably better if you're English, but it is my first build video, so I do apologise if it's as helpful as rubber lips on a woodpecker. All the bits were accounted for and everything was well packed in good condition, so I put it together over about three evenings. I could have done this in a few hours probably, as it was pretty easy to do but filming everything makes things take so much longer. And when assembled with its stainless steel screws and shafts and mix of bare metal aluminium and red anionized aluminium, it looks absolutely lovely. I've named mine Roxanne as well, as a machine like Hopefully she won't mind me calling her cheap, as these things retail for about £450, but can be found as low as £300. I'll pop a link in the video description of where you can buy it, note that I do get a small cut of the sale which helps support this channel, but you don't pay any extra. In fact, you might pay less as I might be able to post a discount code that you can use. Check out the description below to see if I can post one there. The machine is small, so perfect for a desktop CNC with a footprint of 443 by 284 and at 322mm high, so you could fit it on your desk if you don't mind a bit of dust and noise. I've made this temporary shroud to help with that, and eliminates most of the noise and dust, but a little plywood box of a Perspex screen is definitely on my to-do list. The cutting area is fairly generous at 140 by 190 by 40 millimeters, so there's lots you can do on it too, considering its size. The electronics comes with a nice little board that runs Gerbil or Gerbil or whatever, and while it doesn't have any end stops or limit switches on it, it does have the ability for you to add these onto the board, so lots of future upgrade possibilities. That's probably an upgrade that I'm going to do before anything else. There's also the ability to connect a laser module directly to the board, so you could swap out your spindle for one or buy one of the bundles that you can see out there that come with a laser and have yourself a sexy little laser cutter too. The spindle is about 150 watts and will do 7000 RPM, so it's fine to do the type of things you would cut on a machine of this size. It takes ER11 collets and comes with one that takes a 3.1mm bit, so I've already got loads of those for my rotary tool. Now Banggood do sell replacement collets and a good range of bits which I do recommend, so I'll put links to those in the video description below as well. The power supply also doubles as the speed controller and can be set from 12 to 24 volts depending on how much power you want the spindle to have. Something unfortunately that you often find on imported electronics though is the plug of death or death adapter as they say and you should dispose of this immediately replacing it with something safer. It also comes with some cheap and cheerful clamps for holding your work down to the bed. I do recommend one of these precision vices for holding really small things securely. Again I'll pop a link to where you can get one of these in the description below. Software is a bit of a disappointment though. It comes with some basic software which is about half Chinese, half English, and this will do the job, and I do recommend you just don't bother with it though. Download something a little bit more serious like Open Builds or Universal G-Code Sender. So I've put the machine through the usual tests, some plastic, some wood, uh, linoleum, and even aluminium, and these came out perfectly other than a few artifacts from my poor choice of bits. <laughs> Great.
granite and hard rock was a little bit tricky, but certainly could be engraved. I had loads of fun with slate though. I've got loads of it in my front garden, so I picked up a few bits and did a few test cuts. And these turned out really nice, as slate is a fairly soft rock. If you get a chance, you should also check out the little fossils video that I put on my other channel. I'll pop a link of that in the description below as well. I tried some stainless too, but this was probably pushing things a little bit too far, as I managed to get a reasonably poor engrave and did destroy the end of a bit. Aluminium and brass, however, engrave really nice and can even be milled into all sorts of shapes with some care. Now, clearly, I love this little machine, though I've only just begun to explore the possibilities of what I can make with it. Yes, it's in kit form, so it does take a bit of time to build it and the software isn't great, but it's cheap for a CNC of this quality, so you really do get a nice introduction to CNCs without paying through the nose or buying something that will fall apart on you. The rubbish software is easy to solve by using something else like Open Builds or Universal G Code Sender. But I've been using Vetric Aspire to create my designs, and it's absolutely fantastic. I've given the machine 4 out of 5 teddy bears, and I highly recommend it as a small desktop CNC for beginners. So if you buy one of these marvellous little machines, please let me know in the comments below. There's also a link to where you can get one which will help support this channel, plus possibly, again, a discount code to get one of these at the best possible price. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this and also to see what crazy things I'm going to make next. And if you do buy one, please check out my build video, which hopefully will get you started. Thanks again, everybody, and thanks to Banggood.